Path of Freedom, written by the Aran Lopetisa, called The Light in Rio, introductory discourse. Namotaza Bhagavato Arahanto Sama Sambuddhaza Namotaza Bhagavato Arahanto Sama Sambuddhaza Namotaza Bhagavato Arahanto Sama Sambuddhaza so we continue the Vimuti Manga, the path of freedom. Homage to the Blessed One, the Consummate One, the Supremely Enlightened One. So the introductory stanza that the book starts with is this. Virtue, concentration, wisdom and the peerless freedom. To these verities awoke illustrious Gautama. Verities are truths. He who wishes to be released from all trouble, wishes to be unloosed from all attachment, wishes to gain the preeminent mind, wishes to be rid of birth, old age, and death, wishes to enjoy bliss and freedom, wishes to achieve the yet unachieved extinction, nibbana, and lead those on the other shore to perfection, should be versed in the Sutta, the Abhidhamma and the Vinaya. This is the path of freedom. The Sutta teachings, Abhidhamma, higher psychological laws, and the Vinaya, the, the rules and conduct of Morality, the code of the monks and nuns' rules. So, this is the path of freedom, the Vimuti Magga. Pretty clear? So, all good. So this was also written by Arahant Upatissa, we put that last time, and uh, written by one person, one, one meditation teacher, basically. Now will I expound, hearken. Listen. Question, what is virtue? So always usually begin with this by putting the, the subject right on the, under the uh, spotlight and say, like, what is it meant? And then really clarifying it. This is a, they have a five-fold system of doing this, but the defining of things is uh, very clear. Answer, virtue means, means restraint. Concentration means non-distractedness. Wisdom means comprehension. Freedom means freedom from bondage. And bondage, bondage is like being uh, enslaved, or if you're like in debt, and always have to pay a debt here in, in bondage. Peerless means canker-free. Okay, like sores <laughs> and boils? Yeah. Something like cancer. The word is something like cancer, canker. It also means a fetter, like a chain, like when you have people, have people have the, um, metal cuffs and chains around their ankles. But also it has this meaning of like cancer. Stainless is another word. Right? So it also means pollution. So like you know, the way that when cancer gets in your body, it's an alien thing that's in there and it's eating away. So if you don't have that, then you're stainless, free of, uh, what do you call that, alien? Free, free of invasion, free of uh, corruption, corruption. So. Detox. Yeah, toxin, when, when you're doing de detox, you're trying to get rid of all these stored up toxins from the past and everything, but that's the very much parallel with the mind, or right? well, there you're just doing it with the body, but in the mind, it's invisible. Awoke means realized, and understood through wisdom. These verities, I know, these truths I mean, verities, these truths means the four noble verities, the four noble truths. Gotama is the name of a family, the Buddhist uh, family. Illustrious means blessed. Through the excellent merits, 
virtue, concentration, wisdom and freedom, he gained boundless and highest fame. That's describing also there what is meant by uh, the homage to the Buddha. It's included uh, everything in there. Okay, any questions so far? Is that... Virtue means restraint. Yes. I thought virtue was not restraining. Mean, <laughs> you know, like doing good stuff. And... Mm. Well, doing good stuff, you're restraining from doing bad stuff. Oh, okay. A lot of it works like that. <coughs> the absence and the presence of. So you can't have two things at the same time. Okay. So that's not by keeping the rules. Is to check that you're not doing anything uh, bad, you know, unwholesome actions as well. Can't be doing two things at the same time. Okay. So restraining from doing, killing, stealing, adultery, and all that. Uh, <laughs> and all that. Not very precise. Was it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> path of freedom described. So, what is the meaning of the path of freedom? Freedom means the five kinds of freedom. One, freedom of suppression, vikambana vimuti. So, get on to what that means. Um, two, freedom of parts. Three, freedom of eradica eradication. Four, freedom of tranquility. And five, freedom of emancipation. Uh, when it says from, it, it, oh, it means like, through. Freedom through suppression, freedom through parts, freedom through eradication, freedom through tranquility, and freedom through emancipation. Rather than, oh, so, one, what is freedom of suppression? Free, I don't know that obvious thing. Freedom through suppression. No. It is the suppression of the passions through the practice of the first meditation. I, I think I mean the first jhana, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, yeah, pat Patama Jhana, first uh, Jhana. This is called freedom through suppression. So, I mean, first Jhana arrives when you suppress the five hindrances, when you suppress desire, and the mind isn't running around, it's collected enough, and there isn't any aversion, and there isn't any sinking. And there isn't any agitation through uh, restlessness, and there isn't any doubts just bothering like this. So when all those things stop, the pulling, the pushing, the sinking, the shaking, and the doubting, when it stops, this happens, and that's called the first jhana. All those other things are kept away. This is called freedom through suppression. Express the suppress the uh, temporarily. Secondly, freedom through parts is the freedom from views through the practice of concentration which partakes of penetration. So, Nibeda Bhagya Samadhi. Penetration going deeper. This is called freedom through parts. Freedom through eradication is the destruction of the fetters through the practice of the supramundane path. This is the difference between jhana and the nibbanic path, the, the vipassana path, which has a permanent effect. So you temporarily suppress the you know, desires and distractions through through jhana because mm -hmm. you can't be like looking on Facebook mm -hmm. and doing it or you know uh, things in the environment when you're with jhana. So during that time there temporarily away. When you start, take away your casino object or your breath object and you come back, oh, everything can come back again. But the ten fetters are gradually, one by one, um, actually really broken um, and permanently weakened through attaining the path. What are the ten fetters? Um, well, when a person attains stream, stream entry, they get they get um, clarification from doubts about the Buddhist teaching. They realise that it isn't really attainable by them because they've just attained it. They've actually attained Nibbāna themselves. The Nibbāna, the, the Arahants and, and uh, all of the different the Anagami, Sakadagami, Sotapanya, is all the same Nibbāna. So once it's tasted, once it's uh, re realised even for a moment, 
and, and the person comes back, they, they attain as, as far as it goes, they actually get to the end of the path. And so the doubts immediately, any doubts that, you know, you know uh, personal doubts about being able to attain it, or the teaching of the teachers, or technique, or go the realize now. They, they, they don't need to, anyone to tell them, they know it by themselves. And then, if people have tried, been trying in other ways to attain happiness in life, they drop them. And many people can be doing like things like animal slaughter, sacrifice to the gods, or many different kinds of ways. They realize those ways are never going to work. So that attachment to wrong rites and rituals goes out the window. So the second one like that. And then um, belief in a permanent, absolutely iron, solid, permanent self, which is continuing through everything and always was and always will be. Because the flux is seen very carefully, the emptiness of is seen very carefully. And then the weakening, three, then the weakening of the desires. So like someone can be a stream entrant, but they still love music, and they still love chocolate cake, there's enough food, all those sort of things. And they still hate such and such, and they're still angry about such and such. <laughs> they're still a stream entrant, and they still have that. But um, the next time, second time somebody uh, attains Nirvana, called a stream winner, then that's, uh, that's weakened it, and it's like, Oh, wait a minute, you know, I might become a monk or a nun. But string entry won't necessarily want to do it at all. They still want to party, they still want to go back to life. You know, they, they're not so fully uh, onto the uh, whole thing. Um, anger is also weakened as well. So they call these fetters like ten wheels, or a spokes on a cartwheel. And if you break three of them, it's still rolling along, but it's quite weaker. The whole steam train of the defilements is, is somewhat, you know, it's, it's weakened. It's not rock solid and running as super fast as it was before. So then you break two more. The weaken the anger and weaken the, weaken this one, the uh, desire as well. Then if the third time it happens, uh, it's done, and that has to be very deliberately done, and it's by that time someone's quite a committed Dharma, pra Dharma practitioner, and they attain it uh, on the third time, uh, then completely uh, free from uh, the power of passion and hate. So it's like really, really, really done. It. There's still uh, ego, there's still things like national pride, like I belong to this country, this is not my language and my uh, you know, Caucasian and such and such. Those, those kind of over prides and subtle conceits. And, these, and I'm listening to the last five that go with an hour and but This is when someone gets the fourth path. Even attachment to rebirth in heaven, if someone could be, you know, would know they would be able to be in heaven and not interested. Because they know that there's still a subtle, uh, still subtlety that will come and, and go. So even pure, like fourth, like jhana and um, blisses and all those. So the desire, desires are gone, the ang angers are gone, the conceit is gone, and the subtle, subtle uh, desire, not for subtle uh, sense contacts or foods or touch or contact, but bliss, you know, but subtle blisses like that, that's all gone. And then ignorance is put totally, the last bit of the root is totally out. Ignorance is the last thing to go? That's part of the fight. No, they don't go one by one. Without, when somebody attains arahantship, all of those, the last traces of ignorance, which encapsulates all those other things, like uh, the, the identification with the big R, so that, you know, the attach, subtle attachments and prides go a very, very subtle ones. Even subtle ears are like, you know, of attainments and that kind of But that's like, you know, complete realization. Right? So those are the ten uh, yeah. So it's called freedom of parts. Freedom of eradication is the destruction of the fetters through the practice of the supramundane path, one by one, the ten, as you show. This is called freedom through eradication. Freedom through tranquility is to be understood as the happy heart of a person who acquires fruit. Once someone attains Nibbana and then they arrive out of it, these moments are called fruit because the mind has just arisen like this out of Nibbanic state. It's absolutely virginal, pure. There's absolutely nothing as pure as, as a mind which has just arisen out of, uh, out of Nibbana. 
for someone who's just got reborn even, they've just got reborn from having an impure mind before, it's still impure. All our mind moments are, are impure because they've just been stained by the, the, the type of mind moment we had before. But when a mind comes out of it, this fruit is something that we practitioner uh, practice and discipline practice, they try to extend that for five minutes or ten minutes or fifteen minutes. And it's a very, very uh, clear state of cessation that is um, very, very pure. Very, it's the purest uh, thing because it's purer than any matter and it's purer than any mind as well. So, and it's, uh, it's the refreshing nature of it that makes people uh, experience the benefit of it. Even when we're sleeping, uh, the deepest sleep isn't that refreshing. So, but, the, but this is, so this is called fruit, yeah. Freedom through fruit, uh, sorry, no, 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 no. Um, this is called freedom through tranquil, through freedom, mm -hmm. understood as the happy heart of a person who acquires fruit, fruit of the path. This is called freedom through tranquility. Freedom of emancipation, emancipation is like someone taken out of slavery. It's the meaning of that. Freedom through emancipation is extinction without residue of the substratum of being. So this is a bit difficult one. Um, like some, some people talk about Kundalini energy. This is in a way the, the substratum of being. It's like a, a force. You know? So this is underneath everything you know, going on, you know, or something like that. So when this gets uh, cleared, the rebirth energy including the daily rebirth energy to feed and family and kids and warm and you know, like and on and future and everything. And the clearing of, that, of those levels means that the person is very, very, their mind is very free from these <coughs> unconscious, uh, kind of like libido force in a way, uh, something like that. So, tanha, uh, bhava tanha, the craving to become. Well, yeah, but by primal instinct you mean like fight and flight, sort of thing, or craving or Hunger, thirst, uh, you know, just really basic stuff, like I feel cold, I have to get warm, I'm hungry. No, and, and our still has those. They still have the need to eat and, this, and thirst for water. Mm -hmm. This is the thirst for being, the thirst for becoming. Mm -hmm. To belong and to be and to, in the, set in the future. And the stronger, the stronger you have like ego, the stronger that is, you know, to be and to have and to be a name and fame and play and, you know, the whole, all the existence drives like that. Including reproduction and, you know, and all the rest of it that goes with it, making a family and pushing you know, roots and all that stuff into the future. Those are all connected with the rebirth process and the life cycle process. It's addiction to, addiction to being, to people usually don't, well, people are almost, you know, apart from Arahant's dying with that still very, very powerfully running. This is freedom of tranquility. Freedom of, of, of emancipation is extinction without residue of... So extinction absolutely stops, there's none of it, there's going on. Yeah, extinction without residue of the substratum of being. This is called freedom through emancipation. We were just talking about the other day, we were there's a photo of a fetus, and someone like, we go, no, not again, <laughs> I don't want to go back again. <laughs> this is the kind of, we're, we're slaves to being, you know, slaves to the rhythm of, of, of rebirth. And, you know, like, so it's, it's, it's the liberation of that. When your mind knows, this isn't going to happen again. You know? <laughs> this part of freedom is for the attainment of liberation. This perfect path, is called the path of freedom through virtue, concentration and wisdom. Now will I preach concerning the path of freedom. Question. For what reason is the path of freedom taught? Answer. There is a good man, there's a good person. I'll keep it all in there, it's all written in male general. I don't want to keep my switching a little bit of a mess around. But I apologise. Yay. <laughs> You're included, don't you? <laughs> There is a good man or woman. No. There is a good man. Person. Yeah. It's difficult because it's all he and she, he and his and he and his and that. There is a good person. <laughs> they are. Because then after make it's not he is that guy, they are. Do a control, control F, find and replace. <laughs> all the he's, she's, and the person. They, well, we don't want to replace you. You don't, you don't like that. 
I am not dual. <laughs> non dual. Non dual in the lotus. He is like a blind man who wanders, up, wanders to a distant land without guidance. Let me repeat the question. For what reason is the path of freedom taught? Answer. There is a good man. He is like a blind man who wanders to a distant land without guidance. Because although he wishes to gain freedom, he does not listen to the teaching of freedom. Because he does not acknowledge freedom, and because he wrongly acknowledges freedom. So it's a simile, simile about people heading off towards what they think is freedom, either not understanding what real freedom is, or thinking there isn't such a thing as freedom. Since he is hemmed in by much suffering, he cannot gain freedom. Although he wishes to gain freedom, he has not the means. To gain freedom, means are necessary. The Buddha has declared, there are beings covered with but a little dust. They will fall away unless they hear the truth. They said, this is why I said, someone said, you know, why bother, I think Mara said, why bother teaching, don't teach. You know, tried to convince him not to teach the Dharma. And he said, no, I see with my divine eye. There are a few people, few people have got a little bit of dust, you know. And otherwise, they're, they're all, just even though they've got only a little bit, they're very pure, they're very sincere. They really want to know. You know unless I teach them, they won't make the next little bit. They'll just keep going and fall down again and up and down and up and down. Again, the Buddha has declared, O oh, bhikkhus, through two occasioning causes can one arouse right understanding. Which two? Hearing from others is the first. Intelligent attention is the second. Therefore, do I preach freedom? So the preaching part is really important. Not people think, ah, oh, you know, why do need teachers? You know, they're just ego, or whatever it is. No, not necessarily. But it's said without that teaching happening, people won't be enlightened. You can't just necessarily also just figure it out by yourself and heal yourself. You need the authority of him, you know, to be passed down and passed down and passed down. I preach freedom to those who do not acknowledge freedom in order to produce in them the feeling of detachment. I preach freedom to those who do not acknowledge freedom in order to produce in them the feeling of detachment. This is like a traveller to a distant land getting a good guide. We did, a, we did a course on these controversies uh, where it showed the splitting of the schools as well, like forking off and the, and the, and the terrified of the school going sort of relatively straight with all these other people who started adding ideas or changing them or contending, heading off. And to me it seemed like an like, like overview of a desert in a way, you know, you've got these tracks heading off and you know, petering out as well, a lot of them just fizzled out. So all those people who followed that, so 200 of them went, yeah, we're not listening to that, we, know, we don't believe it went off. They just fizzle out, they don't necessarily um, attain what's meant to be attained. So the merits of acknowledgement of the path, a lot of people with doubts don't even acknowledge there is a path, you know, and there's no teachers and you can teach anyone else. No. If a man acknowledges this path of freedom, he fulfills three groups. What are the three? They are the group of virtue, the group of concentration, and the group of wisdom. So this is the eightfold path. You haven't seen it. So three, three, and two. Right livelihood, right speech, and right action. Right concentration, right efforts, and right mindfulness. Right aim or intention, and right wisdom or right view. So it's eightfold path. Very important. That's what it says. What is the group of virtue? It is right speech, right action, right livelihood, and the like. Or the group of virtue is the merit mass of diverse virtue. <coughs> what does that say? Or the group of virtue, which is that one, the morality group, is the merit mass of diverse virtues. Yeah. What is the group of concentration? It is right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, and the like. 
Or the group of concentration is the merit mass, so a group of beneficial uh, things, of diverse forms of concentration. There are many different forms of concentration, actual uh, type of concentration itself, and the object, as we've seen there's like 40 classical ones, and then there's the type of concentration of the path, which is a different uh, type, the Vipassana type of concentration. So all those come under right concentration. Like under right livelihood, ooh, the huge, uh, big expanse with lots of details. What is the group of wisdom? It is right understanding, right thought, and the like. So, right thought, it's, uh, it's clumsy, I think. Or the group of wisdom is the merit mass of diverse kinds of wisdom. Thus, these three groups, groups are completed. So we were looking at like the, 62, the net of 62 wrong views. So it's quite complex when it says um, about uh, right understanding. It's very, very subtle, subtle field with many misunderstandings and things that don't mean it um, to either side. I'm going to go on to the three trainings then. So, um, Sila, Samadhi, and Panya. Any, any questions there? Any real clear? Mm, it's for, well, for me, it's, it sounds really complicated because mm. a lot of it is theoretical. Mm. I myself have not experienced those things. You're experiencing them now. Or maybe I'm just ignorant, which is a feather. <laughs> <laughs> we're all ignorant until we're Arabs, so that's not a problem. Okay. So listening to it and, and over all of these different sessions and lessons gradually builds. Um, but if you're staying in the present moment and you're listening, like you're listening now with, with sincere intention, most of the right, most of the path is there, right now. Yeah, even, even in lifting a foot with your, and paying close attention to it and concentrating on it, that's a moment of the eightfold path is all right there. You're sitting, listening, that's right livelihood. Speech, by restraining speech and by speaking at the right time to ask and cry, this is right speech. Right action, sitting here paying attention, having chosen to come here and not do a lot of other things. Right action, right concentration, you're paying attention and effort, the effort to learn and inquire. So all, all those things are the right, right the, the, this is what that's talking about. Yeah. I guess I'm just feeling agitated because it's... The, the further on that you're reading, the more apparent it is to me how little I know and like during the week from Sunday to Sunday when we have our classes during the week it's very easy for me to get caught up in the normal life mm -hmm. you know and to forget that hey mm -hmm. there's, I have to have this urgency of mm -hmm. studying the Dharma mm -hmm. you know read a little bit every day at least 30 minutes mm -hmm. once a day and then you reading this, it's like, oh my gosh, I really don't know anything. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's good to have that anxiety. It's, it's also one of the knowledges of fear. A lot of people don't think there's anything to learn. They just, oh, no, no. you're wasting your time, you guys go off and sit across the line. You know, like, and that kind of arrogance and that kind of conceit, there's a delusion, it's a self-deception that there's nothing to do. You know, it's better to realize there's something to do than, than believe there isn't and just be a couch potato. And, then suddenly they're old and fat and they haven't done anything and they wasted the time. Or you meet someone who's very highly liberated, you go, oh, how did you get there? I didn't get there. And they've been working at it all those years and dedicating time like this. So it's good to have that urgency. I mean, it's like if somebody uh, you know, realizes that they're unhealthy and then they're going to do something about it. They have to feel bad to, feel, to get to feel good or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it is theory as well. So it's only theory. So um, theory in the sense that practice is you know, far as way more important. Um, but you can also waste a lot of time practicing clumsily um, or hazily, like you were talking about before. And um, it's better to practice with clarity than you know, that know, you, know that you're on the right track or you're not. It's better to be aware. Yeah. I wish I could just pay someone. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. And like it did me, here's the, um, here's the fee. There are a lot of people. <laughs> Great pill for that. It's wrong. Right. Rather a lot of monks, rather a lot of monks waiting out there for you, to, just for you. They're all out there. Just, just give me your wages. Isn't there the sutra on how to enlighten for somebody else? <laughs> there are a lot of charlatans out there who are yeah. just waiting for the, the crocodiles. 
But here we are, the three trainings. A man who acknowledges the truth, a, a practitioner who acknowledges the path of freedom, should be versed in the triple training. It's also, that sometimes the assumption you don't have to do any reading or any learning at all, and that's really clearly not what's going on. There. All the main disciples of the Buddha in heaps of learning. So once you practice, also like even attain stream entry, then it's lots of people, lots of very studious, studious memorizing and learning. They clearly do tons of memorizing. So I think it's something that's uh, overlooked. As I say, you, you go to Burma and so on, memorizing is what they do tons. So I've really sort of tried to catch up on it because it's many years I didn't do any of that. I just read and Google and read and you know, and, and don't actually need, feel any need to retain it. But it's very good to do that. Yeah. A man who acknowledges the path of freedom should be versed in the triple training, the training of the higher virtue, which is the first group, the morality group, the training of the higher thought. I don't know these terms are used. I don't know. It is adhicitta sika, higher thought, and the training of the higher wisdom. Yeah, that's right. You use that term. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's like non-stop practice, isn't it? It's like always keeping the high ideal in mind, never stopping off and saying it'd be better if I just relax off a while and have Dunkin' Donuts. Consciously, just you know, maintaining the intensity. Yeah, yeah. Are you cheating on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Higher thought. That can be your new Dharma name. Um. And it is said, there is virtue, which is the training of virtue, and there is virtue, which is the, which is the training of the higher virtue. And it's going to go on and explain that a little bit, yeah. There is concentration, which is the training of thought, and there is concentration, which is the training of the higher thought. Chitta doesn't necessarily mean thought. It's, it's a mind state as well. Is there a different well. translation to read out? No. No? There's oh. only one. Only me moulding it as I go along. But uh, we, we, this is the reason why we're stopping and starting. It's partly that's one of the reasons you find with all these sort of librarian translators who haven't done that much actual meditation. As they often, they're, they're working with three dictionaries yeah. and, and it makes are, sense and they think it's a correct. A lot of them are scholars, yeah? but they're not no, they're often, uh, and they're trying to yeah, imitate sort of Jacobean biblical language, or they're just Oxford trained and they've always been also thought about. They've just been doing degree on, on degree after scholarship after scholarship, and they've never really done much empty mind training or quietness, and all that sort of, or they've never attained jhana or the path or anything like that. So you know, they're, um, they're just training by word. Yeah, so concentration, which is the training of thought. Which means chitta, which is the tra- it's more the training of the mind, focusing of the mind, and there is concentration, which is the training of the higher chitta, so much purer and um, it's a more spiritual type of uh, work with the mind and heart. There is wisdom, which is the training of wisdom, regular tra- regular training of wisdom, like lot of the discussions and the clever suddhas and also that sort of thing. And there is wisdom, which is the training of the higher wisdom, which is a much more silent affair of knowing the state of arising and passing away, of um, practicing the vipassana jnanas. And, and, and the highest wisdom is nibbana, which isn't a type of sort of clever, wise philosophy or something. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, a cooling and calming and silencing, absolute silencing of all of the impure states of mind. So question, what is the training of virtue? Answer, indicated virtue. This is what they get that from. The virtue that can be appreciated by ordinary people. Indicated virtue. This is called the training of virtue. And then virtue partaking of penetration. Yeah, let me just check. Nibeda bhagya. Yeah, it's inside there. This is called the training of the higher virtue. Again, the virtue of the common person. This is like a marketplace person who's never any interest at all. Uh, in, they're just interested in playing snooker, drinking beer, cockfighting, and selling more fish down the market or something. Yeah, so, sort of never meditating. This is the, called the training of virtue. Arya virtue, 
Arya means pure, that's the meaning of it. This is called the training of the higher virtue. So the Eightfold Path is called the Arya Maga. That's the, the Arya Path, the pure path of purity. Pure. So question, what is the training of thought, the jitta? Answer, it is concentration pertaining to the sense plane. Karma Vachra. So we went and looked at the 31 planes. The first seven, these are including the human plane, all involve opposite sexuality, opposite gender. They all involve six senses. <coughs> so it involves everything from coarse pleasure to refined pleasure up to the level of something like and the equivalent of first, nearly the first jhana. Yeah, so, like the music and the arts and dance and poetry um, come up in this and sort of love levels and this kind of state, that's the, the karma vacha. Karma means pleasure, so it, 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 and, and humans are quite, relative to the deva realms, have quite a coarse state of pleasure involved. Yeah? And then above that you get to the state that can be get through jhana and above that um, the higher jhana ones where you don't even have a, an object, you just have fine states of bliss and then happiness and then equanimity. So they get gradually refined with le less and less division, more unity with the object. That's the, the, what, what typifies them. Humans have pleasure with an object and then merging with an object like falling in love with someone or massage or something. There's always an object which is separate and then that happens with a, a mental object and then gradually getting more and more stilled with the object, satisfied with the object, and then union with the object, which is yoga. The word yogi is the same as yoga. So yoga, yoga vachara, they call the practitioners in the sala, like a, a yoga traveler, you know, a yoga speaker as well. So, what is the training of thought? It is concentration pertaining to the, to the sense plane. Question, what is the training of the higher thought? Answer, it is concentration pertaining to the form plane. I just talked about like Casina and so on. It's one way of doing it. Um, and the formless plane, absence of Casina or uh, through breath control, uh, sorry, through breath uh, observation, anapanasati and attaining to the states of um, joy, bliss, happiness, and then um, equanimity. And then the subtler ones beyond that are the formless ones which involve, in, rather than concentration, it's not excentration, you concentrate outwards by remaining in the centre. Like this is called the training of the higher thought. And again, indicated concentration, concentration that can be appreciated by, ordinary, appreciated by ordinary people is the training of thought. Concentration of part of penetration and concentration of the path are called the training of the higher thought. This translation is not resonating with me very much. Mm, very few of them do. <laughs> very few of them do. So either someone takes it on to me do it. Concentration or... of the higher thought. What? Hey, which, 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 which sentence didn't flow for you? Um, Indi indicated concentration. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I'm waiting in, for you yeah. to explain it. Yeah, in, it just really, well, they, call, they, call it, they haven't given the Pali, which I, I would be able to help out with. They say the concentration that can be appreciated by ordinary people. So there are many things like when people are watching sports, you know, there's concentration on there. If someone's like doing basketball, there's, there's concentration on there. People are like, excellent, you know, really good shot. Or, I don't know, bow and arrow, you know, there's, there's uh, people who go, oh yeah, good, you know, there's, you know, there's obviously strong concentration going on in there. So that can be appreciated by people. We've shown them someone sitting, sitting down or something, you know, because they can't see anything, because it's internal. So like the difference between yoga, yoga and the internal concentration. So it has to be for ordinary people. It has to be external. It has to be used to be using physical objects. So the concentration is visible. Could we? I don't know. Spit it out. We're gone. Uh, okay. um, 
Just say your question. <laughs> well, I have a question. Alright, let's make a statement. Can we do something else? Um, I'm having a hard time. It's, it's really the translation that's... Well, that's what we have to do. Sometimes we have to do that, go, go paragraph by paragraph. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's a better translation of... Of the Vimukti Naga? Yeah. There's only one. The language is a little bit old and colonial, but at least it's 20th century. He was a guy who really did end up ordaining, but he was a householder. Mahathera, or Shalmathera, was his name. That was the one I downloaded, in addition to the one from Access to Insight. And just reading the forward, I was really Access to Insight, I'm not, yeah. yeah. Did you read the actual Vimuti Megha, or just the introduction? No, I think it's just the introduction that he had it on the front. It's got a blue cover, like a turquoise blue cover, airbrush. Mm, no, the one that I started on, it had... The cover had like a wheel, similar this to this? what he did. Yeah, that's what this is called. That's mm -hmm. the, the, the translations are really difficult, and that's why we were hoping for uh, that, the explanations, the simplifications, uh, and that's, that's why... That's what I'm doing, I don't know. Yeah. This, this, is, this is as good as it gets, so really? I think you've just got to lump it. You can't get it. This is a 2,500 year old yeah. text. And after you hear the, the actual text, then mm. if you know it is bad, the train is to simplify yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Be patient, be patient with it, it's not easy, and this is okay. a relatively straightforward one. You know? right. That's just one of the barriers that, you, that you're up against with this kind of thing. Same with the Vasudhi Mega. This way, and, and, and the original one of this, it isn't written by a team, the Visudi Maga is, so underneath it, the relation with it, it, it smooths out a little bit okay. as we go along, it's just the beginning. Because oh, even, uh, even the mm -hmm. uh, yoga of Patanjali, for example, they have just one sentence and they have one paragraph explaining it, or two paragraphs or three paragraphs, because the ancient language is very difficult. It's yeah. not the same as ours now. Mm. Yeah. So if you try to put in a lot of translation and make it 20th century, what happens is that you put a lot of your own interpretation in it. So that's yeah, why... Just, just keep flying up say, I haven't got that. Stop, stop me. Just say, I haven't got it yet. And, yeah, good. Okay. And we'll, and we'll just, go, just go back over again. And that's the idea of it. That's one of the ideas. That's what, it's, but that's what your job is as well. You know, if you're just standing there like that. I'll assume you kind of like, you know, okay with it. So that one, that one was about like, hey, what's the training of thought, and what's the training of, of higher thought, higher thought. So they're actually just talking about like when you, when you're doing any job training, you go to any employment company or any any university, you're doing a form of training, concentration, aren't you? Whether it's carpentry or or, or any kind of any kind of uh, training at all, sports supervising or anything like that, you're doing a form of training, and that's that's what's considered, you know, that's what's meant by that. Is it indicated? Know what they use that for. But uh, higher training like that isn't the same time. It's not. It's not using because mainly with, with concentration of regular regular type, you're using very uh, very systematic thought, totally involved with thought. And when you do the like the personal concentration, you're not using thought in the same way. Drilled, repetitive thought. Even even like the difference between jhana, jhana type concentration, like with a casino, that's very different because you're stilling thinking like that, that's one difference. Like when you're trying to learn to drive, you have to concentrate. They say, like, right, look at the mirror, review, review mirror, check that you've done this, foot pedal, you know, you're, you're, you're doing concentration on a variety of objects in a systematic kind of way, that's learning to drive. That's, just, that's this kind of um, regular, uh, in, what they call indicated concentration, that for, for people in a, in a regular state, a regular state of the mind. But once you withdraw the whole tortoise effect, and then you hold a, a, an object and then keep repeating it. So this is that um, tranquility, concentration. And when you put the awareness fully into the body, which is being made stable, and then you're concentrating into the body, into the feelings, into the mind, into the, the, the dhamma, these principles underneath it. That's a different kind of concentration again. And that get, the more that that gets uh, repeated and built up, and you start to get in, inside through the Vipassana, through inside. It gets very, it gets, it, uh, that point gets very important the more you practice, because you know, like, what are we doing? Everyone else is out there doing those things, it's very obvious to see, you walk in High Street and everyone seems to have a, 
a task to function, function on and you can find yourself doing a practice walking back and forwards and sitting and so on. So it's good to get to like clearly knowing that what you're doing is, is correct and it has a proper place as well and a purpose. Also, we're going to leave the morality side of it there um, or the three trainings. It's basically sort of foundation description before they go on um, deeper as well. So I just want to get sort of... They, they, they're still really clarifying terms at this level. It's somewhat an introduction, you know, uh, I think a lot of these things like the Eightfold Path we've you know, sort of fairly introduced before. So this is just sort of clearing, clearing that. It's quite, uh, quite basic. A bit unpleasant on the eyes and the ears sometimes, you know, if it doesn't flow, flow like that. And as you say, the translators might be a bit, uh, a bit wooden. So next, they're going to switch also.